Hi, today we're going to talk about what do scientists do because you are in a science class and um, so we're going to talk about what do scientists do. And the big thing that they do is study things and different scientists um, will study different types of things. So, but all scientists kind of use this general scientific method where we're making observations, forming a hypothesis, performing an experiment, analyzing that data, reporting our findings, and then having those results repeated um, to, re um, or having those experiments repeated to get the same or similar results. Okay, and this is the scientific method. We can kind of think about even um, babies or small children do this. And this is really how we learn anything um, is by using this method. A big thing to consider when we are doing the scientific method and designing our experiments are the variables that are involved. So we have two variables we're going to talk about. We have our independent variables and our dependent variables. So independent variables, I remember that I for independent is what I am experimenting with or changing. It is what um, I'm able to manipulate or change. The dependent variable, it depends on the independent variable. It is also what we are recording when we're collecting our data. Okay, so here's an example of an experiment and we're gonna identify the independent and the dependent variables. So a student perform, do students perform better on tests if they chew gum? That would be the experiment that they're investigating. And so the independent variable, the thing I am capable of controlling is whether or not the students have gum. Okay, so I, can, I can't tell the student you're gonna perform better and you're not gonna perform better. I, I'm not in control of that, but I am in control of whether I give them gum or not. So that means that presence of gum in this case is our independent variable. The dependent variable is what is dependent on that, and that is the scores of those tests. Okay, so this is how we're identifying our deep independent and dependent variables. So here in this next one, I would like you to pause the video right here and try to identify the independent and dependent variables for this example. Okay, so you should have paused the video and made your answer. Okay, for this, grass height will be affected by the amount of fertilizer. The independent variable is the amount of fertilizer and the dependent variable is the height of the plant. Okay, a big thing to consider um, once we have our experiment that we're going to be investigating is that we only change one variable at a time. Um, we want to do this so that we, if we change multiple variables, then we don't know exactly which one is causing the change. Okay, all other variables should be held constant. And so we refer to those as constants, things that are the same um, in our experiment. So if we look at this example of the grass height being affected by the amount of fertilizer, there's several different things that we are gonna need to hold constant in this experiment, okay? Um, so we are gonna need to have the type of grass held constant. We don't wanna have one type of grass and a different type of grass in a different pot that we're comparing. We wanna make sure that we're watering them all the same amount, giving the same amount of light, um, the pot or the soil needs to be the same. We need to have the same amount uh, or the size of the container. All of these things are constants, things that are the same between our, our different um, trials of our experiment. Okay, so in this example of the chewing gum in the test, pause the video here and think of as many constants as you can um, from this ex example. Okay, so you should have paused the video and come up with constants for number two, students perform better on tests if they chew gum. So there's lots of different ways you could um, come up with constants for this. You wanna make sure that the age of the students are the same or maybe even um, the room that they're taking the test in, the type of test, um, the number of questions or the length of the test need to be the same. The conditions need to be the same for all these students like the type of room that they're in, um, the type of chewing gum or the amount of chewing gum they are given also needs to be the same. So those are examples of constants. One thing that I notice that um, comes up when students are identifying constants is it seems like it's common sense things. Like we're looking at chewing gum, of course we're not going to put one group of students um, from sixth grade and one group of students who are seniors. Of course we're not going to do that because, um, but 
we still want to identify that as a constant, the grade or the age of the student is being held constant. Okay, once we um, conduct our experiment and have our data, it's important to write an argument about the data that we, are, that we have. And we're going to use in science claim evidence reasoning as our format for how we write our argument or um, kind of like our summary of what, has, what we have learned from our data. Okay, so our claim, this is what we know. What do you know? What we have learned from our experiment. In the gum chewing example, if it we found that chewing gum did help the students, the claim would be that chewing gum helps students perform better on tests. Okay, it's our claim of what we have learned. It's a statement. The evidence is how do you know that? This is usually going to be um, our data that we have collected, numbers that we have um, gathered or um, information that we have learned from our experiment. Okay, and then our reasoning um, is basically connecting those numbers, that data in our evidence to our claim. Why does that support our claim? And again, the reasoning sometimes feels like it's common sense, putting those two things together. And so sometimes we don't feel like we need to say it, but we actually do to be very clear in our um in our explanation. Okay, so if our evidence is that students who chewed gum scored an average of 90% and students who chewed or who did not chew gum scored an average of 80%, that would be our evidence, our numbers. Okay, our reasoning would be why does that support our claim? Well, it supports our claim because the students who chewed gum had a higher score than the students who did not chew gum. So it seems, it sometimes feels like we are um, stating the obvious and we kind of are, but that's how we're gonna be writing our explanations when we're um, doing summaries like this. Okay, so we're gonna practice this with some um, examples from some commercials. So we're gonna watch this commercial, they make a claim and let's see if we can identify their claim and if they have any evidence or reasoning provided in this commercial. Gorilla tape. Of course. Gorilla tape is three times stronger for a hold that lasts. Atta boy. Now, who wants a grass fed burger? <laughs> Gorilla tape for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Okay, so take some time. Um, if you need to rewind this a little bit so you can rewatch that video, um, you are welcome to. But identify in groups in class what was the claim that the video was making, what was their evidence that they provided, and then what would be the reasoning for how that evidence is supporting our claim. So pause the video here and work on this in groups. Okay, so you should have paused the video and identified the claim, evidence, and reasoning from that video. So the claim that the um, commercial was making was that Gorilla Tape held three times stronger than other brands of tape. Okay, so that is the claim. The evidence, they didn't provide a whole lot of evidence, but one piece of evidence that they provided was that they didn't, he did not use the Gorilla Tape and the lawnmower broke. So that would be a piece of evidence that the other manufacturer of tape, it did not hold as well as they wanted it to. Okay, so that's the only really evidence I think that they provided in the in the video, but you could imagine that if we were collecting more evidence, we could um, try different types of tape and put um, different weights on it to see which one was the strongest and by how much. Okay, so we could collect more evidence there if we were to investigate this further. The reasoning, then how that evidence supports the claim is that um, if, the, if the Gorilla Tape is able to hold the lawnmower together for a longer amount of time, then it's going to be stronger. Something along those lines. Re relating the claim to the evidence that we are given. Here's another example that I'm going to have you guys watch another video and identify the claim, evidence, and reasoning. This one provides more pieces of ev evidence. So make sure if you need to rewatch it or pause it as you go um, to, to identify all the pieces of evidence you can. 
Let's welcome President Ronald Reagan, who has a few questions for you. Sorry, Dad. Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois. It's like a towel. It's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat, the RV. Sham Wow holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? It doesn't drip. Doesn't make a mess. Bring it out. You wash it in the washing machine. Made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. You can cut it in half. Use one as a bath mat. Drain your dishes with the other one. Use one as a towel. Olympic divers. They use it as a towel. Look at that. Completely dry. Put a wet sweater. Roll it up. It dries your sweaters. Here's some cola. Wine, coffee, cola, head stain. Not only is the damage going to be on top. There's your mildew. That is going to smell. See that? The most of We're going to do this in real time. Look at this, put on the spill, turn it over without even putting any pressure, 50% of the cola right there. You follow me, camera guy? The other 50%, the color starts to come up. No other towel is gonna do that. It acts like a vacuum. And look at this, virtually dry on the bottom. See what I'm telling you? Sham wow, you'll be saying wow every time. I can't live without it. I just love it. Oh my gosh, I don't even buy paper towels anymore. If you're gonna wash your cars or any kind of vehicle, you'd be out of your mind not to own one of these. All I can say is sham Wow! You're gonna spend twenty dollars every month on paper towels anyway. You're throwing your money away. The mini sham wows are for everything, for everyday use. This lasts ten years. This lasts a week. I don't know. It sells itself. The sham wow sells for nineteen ninety five. When you get one for the house, one for the car, two for the kitchen and bathroom. But if you call now, within the next twenty minutes, because we can't do this all day, we'll give you a second set absolutely free. So that's eight sham wows for nineteen ninety five. It comes with a ten year warranty. Here's how to order. Okay, so for this example, again, come up with the claim that was given in the ad, the evidence, and the reasoning provided. You can pause the video here. Okay, so you should have come up with the claim, the evidence, the reasoning. Um, the claim was that it was, was it 10 times more absorbent than the other um, brands? So the, that was the claim that they were made. They had several pieces of evidence, and um, I'm not going to go over all of them, and I'm sure you can share in class the different pieces of evidence. You could include the evidence from the different people who have purchased that they had good testimonies. Um, you could include the all of the things where he showed what was happening, right, where he showed how much water was absorbed by the ShamWow or showed that it absorbed different types of liquids. All of those would be pieces of evidence. Okay, so our reasoning then would be that the sham wow absorbs more liquid than the other ones, and th therefore it's making the claim that it is more absorbent and better than the other brands out there. Okay, so we, um, we're looking at all these experiments today, and I'm going to have you guys for the rest of the class work on an assignment that plans an experiment and looks at some um, analyzing our claim, evidence, and reasoning with an example of looking at height relating to shoe size. So let me show you that assignment. Okay, so if you go on Canvas, it's this height and shoe size experiment design. Okay, and it's going to be this file. Um, I'm going to have them printed for you. But our question that we're investigating is how does height relate to shoe size? So first, I want you to identify your independent and your dependent variables. And then talk, and you're welcome to talk in groups for this, but everybody needs to turn in their own individual assignment. But if you want to talk and brainstorm, you can. Um, you can either kind of sketch here or write steps. If you draw a sketch, please make sure that it is labeled clearly so that um, anybody could follow the, the steps for how to set up this experiment. What would you do? Identify constants. So remember, those are things that are held the same. In our experiment, things were not changing. So for this section, it has 10 listed. Um, try to come up with at least five, okay? If you can come up with 10, that's great, but try to come up with at least five constants. And then you're gonna, in your class, you're gonna collect some data. So for this, you're gonna need to know how tall people are, so get their height, and record their shoe size. Okay, so you're going to organize your data. And we didn't really talk about how to organize data today, but just organize it here however you see best. 
and then you're going to write a conclusion based on that data. So once you collect your data, um, you're going to think about what you had, and then you'll write your claim, your evidence, and your reasoning as a summary here. So your claim is going to be related to, it's basically answering this question on how does height relate to shoe, shoe size. Your evidence, this is where you're going to be telling us what pieces of data that you collected support your claim, and then your reasoning explaining how that evidence supports your claim. Okay, so this is the assignment that you're going to turn into Canvas. The way that you will submit it is that you will take a picture um, of both sides of this document and you will upload those two pictures to Canvas um, and submit it that way. Okay, so those, that is what you're doing for the rest of class. Okay, bye.